point is moving in the plane and its tangential acceleration is constant a and its normal acceleration is a function of time b t power 4. We need to find the radius of curvature and the total acceleration as a function of s distance covered. So you can see in both the questions he is asking we are not bothered about time in both the questions. So radius of curvature and acceleration as a function of s. So somehow we need to get rid of time in both the equations. That should be in our mind while we are trying to solve it. So let's start that. So we'll start with our tangential acceleration at which we write as dv by dt and it's given as a. So we are writing it in form of dv by dt so that we may eventually try and get to get this t out of the scene right so v becomes equal to at and because the acceleration is constant we can write our equation of motion that distance is half at square and normal acceleration is given as v square by r which is bt power 4 so now we have got three equations and we have three unknowns which are v t and radius of curvature rc so if you are not familiar with this equation this is a standard equation where radius of curvature is v square by a perpendicular so a perpendicular is a normal so if i take that a normal this side so a normal becomes v square by rc so in the three equations we need to find radius of curvature and we have two more variables that is time and velocity so we'll eliminate t and v both and we'll get radius of curvature as a is cubed by 2bs part 1 answer now total acceleration so that is at square plus an square so at is constant it's a so we'll put that an we'll just write it as bt power 4 so an square will be b square t power 8 so again we don't need the term t so you see from these three equations this is the only one where we can get rid of t and get the answer in terms of s which is required so we'll put the value of t from our equation 2 and get our answer so again quickly our approach here was because they have given one of the accelerations in terms of time we wrote the other one also in terms of time and by differentiating it sorry integrating it again or you can say that by writing directly the equation of motion because acceleration is constant we got these two equations and this was given so from here we eliminated velocities and time to get radius of curvature and for total acceleration we again got a term of time which we got rid of from this equation so I have directly written these two equations because acceleration is constant but you can also arrive it by just uh, integrating it so dv is equal to a dt and then you integrate and then if you integrate again so v you can again write as ds by dt and you can integrate again so we are just avoiding those steps because we know it's a uniformly accelerated motion so we can write these equations directly yeah that's it